Good morning. We'll give everyone a few minutes to come on in. Hello. Good morning. Giving everyone a few folk minutes to come on in. See a lot of folks on the line. Do you think we're ready to get started? I think we probably could, couldn't we? All right. Yeah, I'm seeing most people in here. So, all right. Go ahead and kick us off, Liz. All right, welcome everyone. Hopefully uh, you've all made it here, so you all know about antitrust and you all made it into the meeting logistics, so that's all good. Uh, and I guess that Amy is keeping track of these attendants. It doesn't automatically update, but they are all taken care of, so. Okay, good, right. So um, before we get into the actual agenda, I wanted to do a bit of meta agenda, where because this is um, supposed to be about the TOC and SIG chairs and I'm not sure we have a kind of process for assembling the agenda for these meetings. So I wondered if we should have like a, a bit like we have for the TOC regular meetings, we have that public working doc and we can kind of have suggestions for the agenda going into that. I was thinking maybe we could have something similar for this meeting but Focusing on Happy to use the uh, same um, TOC meeting doc for this. This is a TOC meeting, and that doc is available for comments and and notes and things that people want to be able to put in. Okay, so do we want to have a separate section in there for items that people want to particularly raise on this? Sick chairs. Okay, that sounds good. 
I will put in the future agenda items and people can ping me as needed with whatever whatever comes up. So great. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Because I think now that we've got this regular session, it's great, but we don't really have a kind of uh, a process yet for sort of figuring out what we want to talk about. Uh, but I think that uh, Amy, you wanted to talk about process. They had a special request, mm -hmm. actually, um, as far as being able to make sure that we walk through the graduation process review for sandbox incubation graduation, and this is based off of uh, Michelle's great work. And uh, there was a request to be able to document where things go in the, in the repo. So yes, after this meeting, we will be documenting where SIG chair things live. Um, so that was that was today's kind of special request. Um, I'm happy to be able to drive and I'm happy to be able to let Michelle come and, and give more color as well. Um, and there was a note around TOC survey results. I do have an area in here where the SIG chairs can be able to kind of, you know, raise things up. I know that there are some questions um, of projects needing input from at least one SIG and we'll have an opportunity to be able to put more in, so. With that, I um, wanted to be able to kind of kick us off into graduation process review. Um, I have a readme in PR for comment. Um, the idea here is that it creates one source of process and it kind of outlines our project life cycle and includes project stages, the proposal process, which I know has been um, kind of in flux and people want to be able to actually get totally clear around what's required. Um, talking about project graduation process, there's a little bit around the archiving process, which I did not include today. Um, and there's bits about annual review in there. Happy to take comments, but wanted to be able to surface this as I know there's been a request to be able to make sure that that process repo gets a little bit more aligned and this is one way of doing it. So just a note on that. Um, and I, I, I'm just going to note that on that PR, I did suggest that we don't duplicate because there are, some, I, th I think the information is pretty hard to find. So I'm all for mm -hmm. read me. Um, but I think maybe we could link out to the existing docs rather than duplicating. I, we, you know, we put in quite a lot of effort last mm -hmm. year to remove a lot of very confusing duplicate information. So, or duplicate and slightly conflicting information. So I'd really like it if we could just have you know, one set of documentation for each process. Sure. Um, other thoughts, comments? Uh, I'll come in here. Can you hear me okay? I've been having some issues with Yeah, you're today. fine. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I was reading uh, the document and, and you know what? I, I think I, um, I've been hearing uh, like two different ways to describe the process. One is how do you graduate from like a level and get into another uh, stage. Um, and then there's the, like, how do you just enter a stage? And I think it gets a little confusing when you, when we say, uh, when we describe the process as graduating from sandbox into incubating or graduating from incubating into graduating. I just think that maybe um, it'd be helpful for the community if we could uh, just talk about how do I enter a stage um, instead of how do I graduate a stage? So just because um, you don't necessarily have to go through sandbox to get into incubation, X, Y, Z. So I don't know if people have thoughts around that. I've just been hearing it both ways. So I thought I'd suggest um, well, especially one way of describing it. Graduation as a level. I think that's an important point, Michelle. To yeah, absolutely. The same overloaded term. Um, but I do, I have talked to a couple new projects lately and they were confused. They thought they had to enter a sandbox and like go through the progression. Yeah. Um, and I would love it if we moved away from that because yeah, it, 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 we should be really focusing on like incubation and graduating projects, shouldn't we? So the sandbox is, it's a thing, but it's not really where the, the, the really good pro projects are today, right? The, the, the important ready CNCF, uh, you know, stamp of approval really kind of is kicking in much more strongly at incubation level. There is a note in chat from, I believe, Bob around how Sandbox can be a terminal place for neutral collaboration as well. And, and from what I'm seeing for responses, everyone is like more or less aligned that that's okay. Absolutely, yes. Um, which actually
actually brings us directly towards the uh, sandbox highlights that I wanted to be able to highlight here. Um, and this is what we've said has been the goal of sandbox. Does this still fit? Is there anything we should change in here? I would not want to rewrite the definition. We have a definition somewhere else. I'm not sure. Okay. You know, there's a good reason. Why don't we mm -hmm. use the existing definition? Okay. We can. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with trying to compare this to the existing definition, but, you know, then I think we should com compare them, not just try and rewrite it from scratch. Yeah, I this think is... there's like a mismatch between what's in the repo and what's on the website. And this one's on the website, correct? correct? This one is actually coming from the repo. Oh, okay. Never mind. Did you mean from the that? proposed repo, not, or is it from the... This is from the project proposal um, that Michelle put in in February. I did not write this down. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so it must have been something from a previous uh, uh, a previous um, converse, or previous document that I edited, but I did not. I did not oh, write okay. this in. Uh, All right. Just a quick comment on the last sentence. Uh, if somebody just wants to enter in sandbox and say their incubation is not in his plans, should that be mentioned here too? Because That's the there is the last bullet. Yeah, I just see it says that uh, any project that realistically intends to join CNCF incubation in the future, which is not necessarily the case for every project. Yeah, I think that last bullet, bullet is actually misleading because it's suggesting that you have to join a sandbox in order to join incubation and that's just not the case yeah i think we can be a little bit more explicit about you know uh the ability to just stay in sandbox indefinitely i feel like also i mean this is a a good high level right of what sandbox means to everybody but it's just i think we need to be more explicit of what, about what like a uh, project gets out of sandbox and maybe they just go in for a neutral collaboration and that's okay I just think that it's confusing when you're a new person exactly um, to understand perspective um just to ask the question because i'm fairly sure we covered this before but i don't think the intention was a project stay in sandbox indefinitely right there was a review process, and if the project wasn't progressing, it would get archived. So, so I, can, I guess the, the intention is that it does move up the graduation stack. It's not about keeping them there forever. So I found where this language comes from. This language comes from the uh, Sandbox Guidelines V1, which I think uh, originally might have come from uh, like Alexis or Quinton. Uh, so it does actually have that bullet point about any project that realistically want, intends to join CNCF incubation. So that does actually already exist, but I still think it's misleading. Um, and I'm sure that somewhere in here there is a an expectation. It does say at the, the very end of this let me send the link they'll say at the very end cncf sandbox projects can stay in the sandbox indefinitely although before there is a bullet before that says they're reviewed on an annual basis all right i stand corrected <laughs> uh if you'd like to be able to put more details into the pr that's out there to be able to like align this further that would be amazing um in the interest of time i'm going to be able to move us on towards what i believe is the uh sandbox proposal requirements you think uh one more point that i wanted to yes. talk about that if, the, if the, the, pro the project can stay in sandbox indefinitely and they can do reviews but um it, it, and that's for the health of the project and um you know, in, in the reviews, something may come up where the project is not longer being used anywhere and it can actually be archived, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, um, I think that's the process, right? Yes. Any other comments? Uh, 
there's a, a interesting uh, point from Josh about proposing to raise the requirements for incubation. Um, do you want to talk about that idea? I think that sounds interesting. Yeah, well, we've been organizing a uh, new SIG, the contributor strategy SIG. Um, and my part of that is the governance sub project. And so, for example, I'd expect in a month or so, I may be proposing that we add a governance requirement to incubation. Um, and if the TOC agrees that that's a good idea, then that would mean that the sandbox would become a place for projects that were otherwise good but did not have the, any kind of governance together yet. Um, uh, so, I mean, basically anything we do to raise the requirements to get into incubation, um, which in general I believe that we should do, um, then mean that the sandbox becomes more important for projects that have a reason to be affiliated with the CNCF, the technology is interesting, but they don't have the project parts of being a project together yet. I think that sounds really good. We do have a few things, but let's say questions that are raised in the due diligence guidelines. So it's not like a firm criteria for incubation, but uh, I think actually tightening them up into some better governance criteria, I, I would be really interested in that. Any notes around the proposal requirements here? Um, there's a particular note about how Sandbox is not required to undergo due diligence and incubation would require end users activity and contributors. Um, and then just a quick review around how the process is currently running, which is a project being reviewed by a SIG chosen by the TOC to review. And then the SIG makes a written recommendation to the TOC to review and three sponsors are required for entry. Any questions here, comments? So there's uh, somewhere uh, written, I guess, that an artifact is needed from the six to uh, for the for the TOC to basically uh, review the the project and find out whether they want to sponsor or not, right? So um, is that somewhere? Or, I mean, or, um, or, or do we need to add it? Right? The written recommendation part. Yes. I'm 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 not sure what the question is. Uh, yeah. So, uh, is, do we need to add it to the, the GitHub repo? Is it documented somewhere? I think it is in there. Okay. I will check just to make sure. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as part of that template, that should be part of the yeah. written recommendation in okay. that. So, so long as all the SIGs are using the same template, I think there was still some contention in the PR around that. Um, where we need to come up with, I mean, maybe there's different categories of things we want to cover, but I think all in all, we probably want to come up with a standard set of things we want to collect and then each SIG can maybe do like a cube customize on their, for their specific things, but try to keep it consistent. I have a question as well. Does that this mean that the projects would go first to the SIGs for a review? or the first point of contact is gonna be the TFC, which will redirect them to a SIG review and then reevaluate. The latter. I don't think we're changing the Behold. process. It'll be TFC and PR. You asked exactly the right question here. Um, Katie, does this answer your question? So does that, is that formally, is there like a process that's formally saying you are in this stage? So, so I'm a brand new project. I go out here, I create a GitHub issue in just the normal repository. And then I assume it's gonna be put in a queue that the TOC is going to provide some sort of assessment either to send to a SIG or postpone three months, six months. I think the, the idea of having like being in this project purgatory is um, frustrating for some projects. So how can we better communicate where they are in the process? Amy, do you want to talk a little bit about the project boards? 
Yes, right now there are three project boards to be able to say where you actually are in all of this, and I didn't actually get a screenshot of those. Um, but that's actually included in the uh, the README PR as well, and it basically says here's here's the lane for people who've come in. They need to be triaged around like which seg they should go towards. Um, and at this point in time, we've most of the time put everything over into um, like the the seg gets chosen, and then from there it, the presentation happens. Um, does that answer your question, Erin? May I add to that? Yes, of course. Uh, so I just pasted the link um, to the first one that people kind of uh, uh, projects go into. And so we call this board the initial project triage and sandbox project backlog. Um, so once the once the project is triaged, um, say it might be triaged for the incubation backlog. Um, so we'll take it out of that column and put it onto another board, paste that board here. There is a similar one for graduation. Each column highlights the stage that the project is currently in. Um, uh, and you might be wondering like, you know, who triages these and, and whatnot. And I don't know if we've publicized that we're on a rotation, but um, the TOC has been on a triage rotation for the last several weeks. So there is one person that is um, responsible for going through and ensuring that the, this uh, backlog is, uh, is moving forward. So um, I feel like that's been going pretty smoothly for the last few weeks, it's a new process, uh, but I think Given that context, if there is some additional feedback here on how we can improve, then I'll be very welcome. Absolutely. Well, I love this uh, board. Do we have a link to it that people know where to find it when they're going through this document? Like it's, could we have it as part of the flow chart? Like check your status. Um, I don't know. I'm open to suggestions, Michelle how people yeah I think so um like the projects are linked currently in Amy's new uh document um so we could follow that uh kind of follow that pull request and ensure that it's in there but you know what I'll just create an issue real quick or, or you're welcome to in the in the issue queue and we can figure out what where the best place to put that is and maybe that's the readme maybe that's I'm not really sure um but we can take suggestions there but yes that's a great idea and we should make sure that the links are are publicized liz you unmuted did you have something that you wanted to add i was just going to say like plus one to adding a link to the project board from the process docs i think that would be very helpful yes when that gets merged that that will be in there please put more comments about where things should go um lots of conversation in chat anybody want to be able to move it to voice Could we query uh, someone brand new to this process and see if they felt like they could find everything easily? Uh, I'm wondering if we suffer from, we know where everything is compared to a brand new person. Um, if, is there any couple new projects that we could go back and do a post-mortem with them to see how they figured out how to get things going to better customize? Let, let Miss Chaos might be, um, might be a good one. I know they're pretty new-ish uh, in the last month or so. Volcano um, might be good too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We still oh, have. That's a great idea. We still have new, potentially new projects coming in that don't have a SIG that covers them yet. Right. I'm just curious if we could take someone who's like, I've never dealt with TOC. I don't know how to get into the CNCF. Here's how I went about it. Like, I mean, we're, we're already tainted. We, we've done it old ways, new ways, future ways. I, I just would like to get a, a non-biased opinion about how they found stuff and if they knew what they were doing or they were lost in the process, because that would give us a good way that we should be changing things. So I want to I wanted do that. I just, oh, go ahead, Liz. I, I was just going to say, I, I think the, um, the README, the, the idea of having a, a README to sort of bring these process points together, I, I do think that is, 
without that it probably is pretty confusing for people so I, it, yeah it's definitely confusing I, i've spoken to a lot of people who are confused by it so i think this would be very helpful Other pieces, yeah. or should we go on? Go ahead. All right, we can certainly come back. Happy to be able to get more review on this one, but I wanted to be able to move on towards incubation, which I think is kind of where maybe Josh is uh, uh, moving us towards as well in chat. Um, this is the piece where due diligence would come up and would be. Um, available here. And this is actually where I think the uh, governance area for the SIG contributor strategy is going to be looking at making more recommendations here. Is that correct? Yes, I'm working on governance. Um, I know that Chris has requested um, that somebody do a review of the project health um, uh, information. Um, I don't know that it's assigned yet, but but uh, which means we might not get to it for a, a couple of months, but. When you, um, when you were talking about governance requirement earlier, Josh, were you stating that a project should follow a specific type of governance or were you um, uh, talking about requiring uh, like a stipulation to governance and not, you know, maybe the core maintainers need to be like from multiple companies? Um, I was envisioning actually sort of a two-tier government requirement for incubation versus graduated, okay. um, where for incubation, the requirements would be that written governance has to exist, um, although okay. it can be relatively skeletal at the incubation stage. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so that is... There has to be somewhere a process document, preferably contributing.md, because we use that, um, mm -hmm. that explains, for example, how you get to be an owner or a maintainer, or whatever term the project is using. Um, the, um, and that the governance process has to be non-discriminatory. Um, that is, it can't be dependent on, like, for example, you could have a document that says, I get to be an owner because I get hired by Red Hat to work on this project, that in my opinion should not be acceptable for incubation. That is, mm -hmm. it has to be, even if the project doesn't have more than staff of one company as um, project leads yet, it has to be possible for, you know, um, people anywhere in the world, people working for whatever company, people of whatever, you know, background or description, to become project owners, maintainers, leaders, whatever the conception is, um, even if it hasn't yet happened. Um, and that's the kind of um, requirements that, that um, I was planning on drafting for a proposal to TOC. Not done okay. with that yet. Um, we just formed contributor strategy two weeks ago, so um, still working on that. Awesome, thank you. Uh, thanks for explaining that, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think Bob had a suggestion around uh, requiring um, uh, multi-company governance. I don't know how to say that the way he did because I don't remember the exact wording. But um, Bob, I think if you uh, want to talk more about that or submit that as an issue on the um, uh, TOC issue queue, that'd be great. Okay, happy to do that. It's come up a bunch of times, um, including even in board meetings. So uh, I don't I don't think I'm the lone voice on this. We I'll I'll, uh, I'll add something. No, you're not. I I had mentioned this to some of the other TOC members as well, and I actually drafted up a long issue about it and then accidentally closed out a tab a few weeks ago. So um, so anyways. Do you want me to comment on that thread? Is there a link you can post here Which in the chat? Which thread are you talking about? Uh, you were saying there was an issue you opened. On this oh no, I, I didn't actually okay. press it, so okay. I didn't. If not, uh, Bob, within the next two weeks, I'm going to be proposing um, uh, the governance requirements. Well, hopefully two weeks. Um, when I propose the governance requirements, please bring this up, because like I'm going to propose that incubation stage, it has to be possible for the project to be multi-organization, 
but that we don't need to require it to be multi-organization yet. Um, and it sounds like you want to propose that actually at entrance to incubation, the project has to be multi-organization. Correct. And it's something that we should hash out um, as the TOC should decide on. So I, I would love to hash on it with you. Okay, cool. Um, Great, I'll ping you. you over Kubernetes Slack. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, just, just one small thing, um, because this often kind of falls through the cracks. In Sandbox, there is a requirement that, uh, or, or there is one set of criteria that, that, that is um, the project has to adopt the CNCFIP policy. So, you know, things like the Apache license and those sorts of things. And while it isn't a gate to, inc to, to, to Sandbox, it's expected that Sandbox projects do that as part of their membership. Um, so it's kind of implied that that's also a requirement for incubation. Um, but we don't often specify that set of requirements for sandbox, even though it is. So, so I'm, I'm just kind of highlighting this, that this kind of sometimes falls through the cracks um, when explaining it to projects. I didn't quite get that. So um, I am seeing the IP policy uh, on the uh, sandbox requirement um, uh, area. Um, and on the incubation stage, it says to be accepted to incubation stage, a project must meet the sandbox stage requirements plus, and then it has like a set of bullets. So um, I'd love to understand more about, you know, what is specifically confusing or where that information is missing. It's, it's not that it's, well, it is a little bit confusing in that the sandbox projects specify that um, uh, you have to use the IP, the CNCF IP policy as, as, as entry criteria. But in reality, um, that often requires the CNCF's help to get them to that stage. So we have had cases where projects join at Sandbox and then um, adopt the CNCF IP policy while they're Sandbox members. Oh, but there isn't okay. a... That's you see it. what I mean, but but there isn't a formal uh, there isn't a formal step that says they've actually done it before incubation. I I think they I think it is in already there because it has to be they have to meet all the sandbox requirements plus the incubation ones uh, in order to go to incubation. I also think that uh, you know the TOC mem you know if we were not checking for things like the IP policy that would be pretty weak due diligence <laughs> uh, and I think just the I mean the sandbox stage requirements are pretty clear you're right that in practice they actually do the trans trademark transferal and the IP policy as part of kind of moving into the sandbox but I don't think I don't think that's really is that really cause confusion I mean I can see I can see where um where this is coming from, uh, I think because, I don't know, I've, I've been around the CNCF for a few years now, so I understand like you agree to do these things and then there's a transition period where the CNCF staff helps you actually uh, make the transition. Um, like the specific company, while the project is under a specific company, their legal team may not allow you to actually uh, you know, make those kinds of changes like license changes and things like that. And I think because this happens sometimes in that transition period, like if we want to continue that process, of course, um, then we should explicitly write out that there is a transition period and that you should agree to these things. And once your project, once this pull request is merged, then we will start this transition period um, of actually, you know, getting these things um, you know, making the cha actual changes on the repo. And then after that, you'll become a full-fledged project, sandbox project. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was referring to. It, it, it sort of implies that mm -hmm. because the incubation requires the sandbox criteria that, that the IP policy has been done, but the IP policy tends to be 
an unbounded transition period and it's not necessarily guaranteed so that incubation that is actually done unless is that, it, checks it. it it doesn't have to be done for incubation because if you go into incubation without going to sandbox the ip process will take place after incubation so i don't think we can make it a requirement anyway but i think it normally happens within a few weeks and uh and I think, although I think projects are accepted implicitly, I think they would be kicked out if it doesn't happen within a few weeks. So it would be great if we had part of that template that did have these sandbox things that need to be checked off if they come in through incubation. I mean, it would say like, if there were already a sandbox project that would already be done, we'd already have that template filed and be ready to roll. But yeah, we'd need to include any expected criteria entering incubation to be done as well. And though it would put that, it'd just be nice to have it right there up front. We, we have actually captured this now, I think in the, in the new sandbox template. So so we, we we capture like the repos and the licenses and dependencies and everything else. <laughs> so so that should be used as the source when doing the incubation due diligence, if it's already a sandbox project. I agree, but I'm saying if it's not, if I'm a brand new project and I have like, tons of companies and tons of support and it's a really healthy project and I'm like, I'm gonna go for incubation out of the gate. I don't know why logically I would go look at sandbox requirements when I do that. That's all I'm getting at. Like we need yeah, to that's fair. make sure we say, we assume or something at the top of the incubation template that all these pre-requirements have been satisfied in it and it has that section we have in the sandbox template without duplicating. It I guess I'm misremembering, but I thought that that was sort of at the start of the each each um, higher level phase that it it had said all of the prior all the you know the, the level prior was uh, met, but, but maybe it doesn't say that. But Aaron, to your point, it seems like that that's an easy enough thing to have. Just... Yeah, you may be right. I it's it sounds like something we would put in there, but I. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's there in the graduation criteria documentation. I don't know about the template. Is it in the incubation process though, to say we assume that you've done this? To be accepted to incubating stage, a project must meet the sandbox stage requirements plus, and then a list of bullets. And similarly at, uh, um, graduation stage, it's got to graduate from sandbox or incubating status, or for a new project to join as a graduated project, a project must meet the incubating stage criteria plus, and then a list of bullets. But I guess the, uh, the question there is how we make sure that the templates reflect the this documentation. <laughs> if so, let's just check the incubation DD document and make sure that it has a section on the IP policy. And if it doesn't, we can just cut and paste it from the sandbox template. That's easy enough. I don't know, it's a great idea. I'm gonna quickly move us on towards like the, this is like the current flow chart that exists in here. It sounds like everybody is more or less in agreement that all of these steps are, are good. And we're kind of looking at what should also be included in the due diligence template, correct? Anything else? Just one quick question. Mm -hmm. We have had a couple of instances where a project didn't neatly fit into a specific SIG and needed to go through more than one SIG. Um, I'm kind of thinking, do, do we do we deal with that on an ad hoc basis or, or do we want to serialize those SIG presentations or parallelize them or? Um. I, I'll, I'll suggest uh, that, you know, th that project has a parent SIG and if there are additional recommendations, then they all go into that one recommendation doc. But we think about those 
additional recommendations as just affiliated. Um, we want those opinions too, but I think that the pairing SIG should really own the whole process of getting all the recommendations. Yeah, I think, Sounds good. Uh, yeah, I think the process has been going on for a while. For example, we've been doing it with Harbor, right? So Harbor uh, needs a review from SIG storage, SIG um, app delivery, and SIG security, right? And then we're on SIG runtime. And then so we have a consolidated document with all the feedback from all the SIGs, and that will be, I guess, the final recommendation from the six to the TOC, right? So, and that's for graduation. Um, I think uh, maybe in, in every stage, we'll, there will have to be maybe some sort of consolidated document, um, you know, so far, I mean, like incubation as well. Uh, so one question I think I, I had about uh, the TOC um, uh, a person, in, uh, driving the due diligence is that something that the TOC chooses, or uh, that that's something that uh, you know for for incubation, or is that something that some somebody just comes up and says I, I want to do it, right? So, uh, from the SIG point of view, is is there something that the, the SIG can do uh, to find somebody to drive the due diligence? Thus far, it's it's always been a volunteer from the TOC. Uh, you know, stepping forward, uh, you know, depending kind of on their expertise with the project, you know, time available, that kind of thing. Got it. Behind the scenes, uh, Amy usually sends um, the TOC like a list, I think it's every week, right? It and she's week. just kind of Every week, she kind of like lets us know, like, "Hey, these um, these projects need incubation review," uh, and and where everybody is actually, uh, whatever uh, calls to action there are. So we kind of pick from that list um, based on availability, like Liz said, just to add some color. Yeah, it's a good point. We do have some process going on behind here that Amy is very helpful with. <laughs> It is a long email reminding people where everything is because I know it's not necessarily available for everybody to look at the boards. So, um, in the interest of time, I do want to be able to move us on. Um, this is our graduation stage, and you you are correct in that. Like this one does say, Liz, that like projects that wish to move from incubating to graduation, there is some documentation in here that a project could come in at graduation. Have we ever had that happen? I think Kubernetes might have been the only one. No, it's never happened. Great. So, um, for the but in theory, <laughs> in theory, um, but this is the uh, the part where we have talked about governance. And um, Josh, it sounds like you want to be able to move some of this governance requirements back into incubation. So happy to be able to see what you're you're thinking in a couple of weeks. Any other notes around graduation, comments, questions? I don't see anybody in chat and I don't see anybody like, you know, dancing around. Um, uh, we may have run everybody out of energy, which is understandable. Um, but this one does not actually have a flow chart for this um, right now. We can certainly look towards being able to build that. Um, but right now, this is really just like Here's the criteria. And process at this point is being able to have a, a TOC sponsor, being able to call for public comment, and then being able to move to a vote. My recollection, and I'm just checking it, is that it does, that it says that it's the same as, or it doesn't actually say it. The idea is that it's the same process as the uh, incubation process. No, uh, Liz, actually, we changed that. I don't know if you, um, if you recall, because oh, it's pretty new. Yeah, we did. No, you're right. We do need a new, new one. Yeah, it would be good to have um, a flow chart for it. Um, we changed this a little bit um, 
just to make things simple. And the process is laid out, I think, in a bullet or like number, like one, two, three format, but there's no flow chart for it. I don't see the due diligence process here. So as I understand, there's a due diligence uh, process for graduation, correct? Um, no, there's actually not really the standard due diligence process. Um, so like the due diligence happens at incubation. And then I wish I could find the actual, um, I think I found it actually. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna paste the link here. Um, but you've referenced the due diligence document from incubation. And if there are things that uh, have been laid out in the incubation due diligence document that were highlighted to make sure we address before graduation, those are addressed during the process. But there's not necessarily a new temp like a new due diligence template that you have to uh, go through. Uh, so the process is you, there is a graduation template. Um, it does include a link, of course, to the uh, due diligence requirement, plus uh, a place to fill out all the graduation criteria. Um, at that point, the TOC, the TOC member um, walking that project through graduation uh, kicks off a two-week period um, for public comment if he or she or they uh, feel that there's nothing left to address. Um, and in that time, any SIG, any community member can raise um, any concerns or endorsement or anything like that. Uh, SIGs can take some time to discuss um, if you know they wanna discuss more about that project um, uh, in their own meetings or on their mailing list. At the end of that public comment period, um, the TOC votes. Uh, if there were issues that were raised during the comment period, then um, the TOC can also, at the end of the public period, move to have a full TOC presentation for that graduating um, project before calling for a vote to address any concerns. Got it. That, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's what's been going on with Helm right now, I think. So, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Any other comments or questions around stages, graduations? There's a little bit in chat. Um, I have a question. So we are raising we are raising the bar for graduation, and we are moving the governance from um, uh, sorry for for incubation, and we are moving the governance piece from graduation to incubation. Uh, would there be any changes to the graduation process? Are we raising are we raising the bar for graduation? Um, I don't know yet. I think this is a conversation proposed currently by the SIG contributor strategy who just formed. Um, so I feel like that's probably going to be answered in the future. Um, Josh, Paris. But you could, uh, you could definitely see that that would certainly naturally follow, particularly if you take a look at the first bullet point here, which is, uh, yeah. We, have committers yeah. from at least two organizations? Yeah, and so yeah, and does and, and yeah, so as those terms, committers, maintainers, etc., owners gets defined. Um, I would expect that this would probably change. This would this would raise up a little bit that first one. Yes, this is things that they are currently written, um, not future things. And I think, Elena, you're looking towards like, what will happen in the future? And the answer is wait for a contributor strategy, I think. Sounds good. Um, I wanted to be able to move on in the last 15 minutes or so. This was a time that I was going to kind of, well, 10 minutes now. Um, uh, I know that there were some questions from SIG app delivery. I don't see any of them on the line, so we will follow up offline with them. Um, but this is the time for any of the other SIGs to be able to surface anything that they wanted to kind of put on either, like, you know, short conversation here or an agenda future. Matt, are you here? Maybe. 
What was the question? Uh, my question was if Matt Young is here, but um, if he's not, uh, then I'm just going to do it. Uh, that's Richard for SIG observability. There's three points of order just as a general FYI. Um, first, we will start having bi-weekly meetings every second Tuesday. Uh, I'll send this around to both the SIG list and, and the TUC so everyone is aware. Second, uh, we were talking to, to Steve Flanders, um, who's at Splunk, and he's also involved with Open Telemetry as the third chair for the SIG, which means we'll have the three, uh, the three chairs which, which SIGs should have. And also, as announced, we will be suggesting Bartek as um, the first tech lead. I think he has a document prepared which he can put into, into chat for everyone to see. That's it. Excellent. And that doc is available over in chat. Anyone else who wants to be able to bring anything up? I'm not seeing folks from security here. Definitely seeing storage. If storage wants, you know, the floor. Uh, Richie H decided, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, requested um, to have voice yeah, for a second. Yep, he just yeah, did uh, it. I, I oh. thought I was muted, but yeah, already done. Thank you. Nothing from storage, anything from network? Um, just that we've got a couple um, projects under review and one, the most recent was Chaos Mesh or is Chaos Mesh. Um, they are in process of soliciting TOC supporters. The SIG review of that project isn't complete, but they were asking um, about how they should best go about soliciting support and I uh, promised that I would bubble that up here as a as a venue for that so is that being proposed as a sandbox or incubating project sandbox I mean Amy usually does the hard work of sending things around um, and we kind of just take things as we're available um if anybody has suggestions on how to improve that or anything then let me know or let us know but it's the process right now happy to be able to work offline to be able to move that forward so um runtime anything from your side yeah we have a uh, one project uh, we're reviewing for sandbox uh, metal cube they presented our, our our last meeting on Thursday, and so we, we're we're gathering some information to kind of create an artifact and uh, write a recommendation to the TOC. So that's the only project. So we have another meeting or, or another presentation scheduled um, for Quay, which is a container registry. Uh, so that's gonna happen at our next meeting next week. And that's for incubation. So, and yeah, that's that's pretty much what's going on. So there's a lot of stuff around trying to get more participation. You know, so reaching out to several six, uh, not six, but uh, other groups. You know, like um, the projects from container runtimes and uh, some other projects related to. Uh, how you uh, create an, uh, standards for containers. So, and yeah, that's that's what we, we've been up to. Hey, can I give a quick update on storage? Sorry, I missed my slot. Yes. Um, so just as a quick update, um, we're, we're looking at um, the graduation of TIKV and Rook at the moment. Um, and we also have, um, we, we're, we've also got to contribute something to the due diligence for Harbor. Um, one interesting thing that happened, which doesn't normally happen, is we, we did a presentation. Um, we got a, a project presentation of a project called Profiga, which is um, a, a storage streaming system and uh, for storing events and that sort of thing. Um, and 
one thing which was interesting was that they were kind of wondering if CNCF was the right place for them. Um, and so I guess as a question to the TOC is, do we do we go out and court these projects and try and sell it to them somehow? Um, because I, I guess this was slightly different in that they're 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 considering different options or different foundations that they that they might join. That is uh, that's really interesting. Um, there's a few different thoughts I have about this, but I think we should actually raise this as an issue in the TOC issue queue to discuss further so that everybody has a chance to, to talk about it. Um, there's a few different ways it could go about it. So let's just raise an issue. Also, that's likely to take more than the four minutes we have for this particular meeting. That's completely fair. <laughs> However, um, happy to be able to take that as a future item on um, this particular meeting. Um, contributor strategy, anything from your side that hasn't already come up? Um, look out for more communications from us. Nothing that's um, come up from this meeting though, but we're gonna be sending out tons <clears throat> of for us and maintainer circle information and all kinds of fun stuff here within the next week. Excellent. Um, and we have that, a contributing guide now. It's PR'd in. It's not officially approved, but contributing.md. We've got a README. We've got so much meta stuff. Um, but yeah, nothing else. Unless Josh has something. Nope. Nothing from his side. Um, last piece in here, and again, we've got three minutes or so, um, wanted to be able to highlight the TOC survey results. This is the first time that we have done a TOC um, survey, and um, part of it is being able to see like what people are actually talking about, what people are, are, are really thinking around how the TOC and the SIGs are working out, and um, there's a lot of details in like the further documentation, which is at the very end of this, but I wanted to be able to highlight this to the group and let like both the SIG chairs and the TOC know that this is out there and something for them to be able to dig through. Questions, comments on this? Last is bit. There, oh, oh, yes, sorry. Sir. Is there any feedback in terms of how can we improve that experience overall? Or is it just a, a marking kind of survey type? Um, there is definitely some feedback in there. Um, the full results are available in here, and I knew that we were going to run out of time, so I'm perfectly happy to be able to put this as a item on a future agenda, because um, I know we had a lot to cover today. Um, and I think my last question is, was this helpful? Should we do this kind of format again, and what else should we be talking about? <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's pretty helpful, but I think uh, the agenda might change uh, depending on. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's super helpful, I think. So, yeah, so trying to get more information uh, uh, to people who are interested in working on the SIGs and the TOC. And it looks like there's other people on the call too that are not necessarily SIG chairs and TOC. So, but, uh, for transparency, I think it's helpful. So. And, and, I think, and I saw some of the the survey results, and I think some there were some comments about uh, being more transparent. So I think uh, that will be that you know having a meeting like this will be more helpful for that. Definitely, I'm seeing plus one in the chat. I'm seeing yes, please. Um, anything else before we close? Not seeing anyone directly unmute, so. All right, I will call it. We are actually ending on time. It's good to see everyone. Be well. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye, all. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.